Okay. Um, so I randomly proposed yesterday that we should have a birds of a feather session on security. Um, my background is security, and I keep on seeing slides with security sprinkled all over them. So I wanted to kind of open the conversation, actually work out what people are doing in this space. Um, so the concept of a birds of a feather session, if you're, you're not familiar with it, is an open conversation. It's not me standing here spouting things, or talking about things. It's about sharing ideas. It's about collaboration, OK? And so what I propose to do, how many people have used Agile Coffee as a way of working? One, OK. We're going to introduce the rest of you to it. So to make sure that it's not just me talking about things, um, what I would like you to do is to propose topics, ultimately. Just very brief conversations. Um, write up on a post-it note what you'd like to talk about. Are there any burning questions that you have within your organization? Why, why did you actually come here is actually a, a great question or a great topic. Is it compliance? Is, are you being told to add security in? Are you looking for understanding about security features and the like? So in the next five minutes, if you just write topics on these post-it notes, we'll put it up on the board. And then everyone gets um, probably one vote each. And we can go through, prioritize um, which topics people are most interested in. And then who, whoever proposed that topic can just outline it, and we can have a discussion about that. Does that make sense? The guy who did Agile Coffee before says that makes perfect sense. So at least I got the description right. So please stand up, write post-it notes, vote on topics. If this isn't what you're expecting, then um, there are other great sessions. I'm not going to lock the doors and force you to be in here. OK? Absolutely. Um, and if you want to listen to a particular conversation, Remember to vote on it, and that's where we absolutely will. Okay. Just as well, I got post-it notes. Yeah, let me do. Let me ask them. Pardon? That's minimalistic material. Minimalistic preparation. Only one topic. One could argue. Oh, you can only suggest one topic. No, you can suggest as many as you want. There's only one pen. Okay. I think we needed to <laughs> run down and get them. Okay. So if you just put them up there. Yeah. Anyone else your pen? I thought I said security go to hell. <laughs> Just toss it. <laughs> yeah, Okay, so if we if we finish up writing up the, the topics now, um, I think we've got a fair few. So if everyone who just wants to listen can come up and actually read them, vote on them, which ones we want to talk about. Um, we have 
How do you want people to do, put as many dots as they want, or just restrict to like? Uh, just just restrict to um, because of the number, probably about one dot each. Um, if you're really passionate, I might let you have two. So, so as a preview, we have build packs. Uh, should we manage them in-house, running Docker images in Diego, uh, routing between containers, um, isolation tenant services, hardening of CF, boundaries in services, so that's kind of a bit, uh, container security is over here, build packs, strong authentication, uh, application security, uh, not just authentication, but also authorization. So up there as well. Security and staging groups for application in regards to build packs and what to do to connect to a DB. So build packs over here. Isolation. Uh, what security testing is done before open done for open source Cloud Foundry, and what testing do operators need to do? So probably testing. Uh, malware protection as a service for apps. Why is Clam AV the only one? Uh, so probably services. Security group health. That's got a bit of angst behind it. Um, how to get traditional security teams engaged in Cloud Foundry. And hardening of CF. Okay. Run through. Which one do you want to talk about? Pass back the pens. Please don't walk off with them. Okay. So it looks like in record time of under 10 minutes, we've gone from having absolutely nothing to wanting to talk about routing between containers. Actually, I'll try using this mic. Okay. So we have routing between containers, container security, uh, strong authentication is probably put there. Is that one? Um, key topics for application security. Isolation of tenants. Yep, that's one. Deployment security. And how to get traditional security teams engaged. Okay. So uh, very much the focus of the feedback is routing between containers, strong authentication, container security, these top three, and then um, we'll get onto those. So we have about 20 minutes. So could I invite the person who was wanting to talk about routing between containers um, to just introduce the topic and any particular pain <coughs> points you have? So who wrote that up? Just remember to talk into my phone. 
Okay. Um, my name is Sira Kantana. I work for Audi Business Innovations. So uh, it's a shy company for Audi AG. Um, <coughs> so it's just an idea came up that um, we using right now is a service as a container. A lot of them to 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 provide a service uh, for applications. We can buy a uh, service uh, with applications and like uh, it is more very concerned about uh, that about for, for us that um, how can we secure more um, from one container to another container and uh, so something like that. Okay, so um, to to kind of play it back, so I just make sure I understand um, situation. So you. You have services, are these third party services that you're yeah. bringing in, like databases? Yes. And they are within containers? Yes. <laughs> and, um, and some application like uh, is divided to, to one services, and this application, uh, uh, one services would like to talk with another services. Okay. And like we have one application for one team and another team, and it is like between we would like to like share mm -hmm. and to make something like that. I don't know. Okay, so is is that one container talking to another as in a different application? Yes. Okay, who has experience of this kind of problem that's been explained? Do you want to contribute what you found? So we do a lot of stuff in Spring, the Spring Cloud. And so we use, typically we use Eureka Service Discovery and that gives us ribbon Mike. to do container. Mike. Sorry, yeah, thanks. <laughs> that gives us ribbon to uh, client-side load balancing across those things. Um, the caveat in Cloud Foundry is you have to allow a container to container. But in our ecosystem, we use UAA to do token-based authentication. And so we also are still ensuring that any service call between applications is actually authorized. So from our perspective, you know, we've, we've basically created an internal set of microservices that are allowed to connect to each other. They're all registered with UAA. They all do token-based authentication when they make those calls. And those calls happen through Ruby. So I'm not sure that answers any questions, but. but does it mean, so if you talk from one container to another container, so you have a proxy UAA client credential token, which you use to get tokens and then tokens to the other thing. But communication-wise, you take the full round. That means you go to your whatever load balancer and then the cloud foundry router, and the cloud foundry router is then what you do. So you can do that. Uh, you have to override Eureka's default settings to do that. In our case, we still go through the Go router, but we don't actually go out to the, like, through DNS. Okay. That means you take the Go router for the opponents in. Yeah. So it's not quite a full trip. Yeah. So, so to open this conversation up to people who may be less familiar with Cloud Foundry, um, one of the things around routing between containers or between applications is that you have to go out of the application through the NATs into the Go router and then back into the system by default. There is a way that you can open up your entire environment to allow any app to talk to any other app, but generally that is uh, frowned on, particularly from a security context. So that going via the top is, is um, the way to do it today. Now, in terms of what Chip was saying yesterday when he was presenting the roadmap, is they're looking at ways of going directly within it to avoid having to go via um, the Go router. One, I, I mean, we, we talked about authentication, authorization as being a, a key part of this. The other part is in terms of confidentiality. Now, um, I saw on some slides yesterday that in terms of traffic going into Cloud Foundry, you of course have TLS to the Go router now in, in 1.7. Um, but within the, um, the, within the system itself, between the applications or from the, the Go router to the particular container, 
Um, traditionally, that's an IPsec tunnel. Pivotal has had that. If you're paying them for support, you can get it that way. Uh, but I saw yesterday that I think SAP, and there might be some people from SAP here, have released IPsec um, tunneling that, again, further enhances these container-to-container -container communications. Okay, any final comments before we move on to strong authentication and... So the question is, do isolation segments help in any way? I have an opinion. Does anyone else? So I think isolation segments help from a, a getting an architecture or an infrastructure certified because it means that you can take your applications and say, even if it is compromised, there isn't any crossover because there's an individual virtual machine and you get a whole set of extra security controls around that. Um, within uh, infrastructure as a service and VM-based um, security architectures, there is a long history of how you provide that security to the extent that uh, regulations like PCI DSS can really help. Um, in the special interest groups from finance on Monday, they were actually talking about how separating out the log files, separating out the execution environments will help people run PCI DSS workloads on Cloud Foundry because you have that isolation and that separation which is what people, uh, what the, the standards demand. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think it certainly helps if you're doing calls within the same segment. It's a trusted segment. Okay, um, so who proposed strong authentication? Yeah. And who has experience of strong authentication? Be ready to come up. Good. Hi, my name is Matthijs de Boer. I'm working for SAP. And uh, we have demand for strong authentication. So what we did for the uh, CF command line interface is handling strong authentication using a SAML identity provider that works pretty well. But uh, there's also need for strong authentication within the Cloud Foundry uh, components. For instance, if I have a service broker, then the Cloud Controller is talking to the service broker, and that is one connection we can currently only authenticate with uh, basic authentication using a password. And therefore, what we'd love to have is uh, <laughs> support for strong authentication also for these server-to-server -server connections within Cloud Foundry. Okay, who's from Pivotal and can take that and try and put it on the backlog? I, I, I guess with SAP, um, you've, your access is at the highest level anyway, so I'm sure it's already there. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, strong authentication, usually we uh, see this as something where we have a digital signature in there. For instance, X59 client certificates, we consider a strong authentication. Two-factor authentication when it's, user in, uh, when it's user interactive. But for server-to-server -server communication, I would see it as X59 client certificates, for instance. So I guess I should have asked this question right at the start. How many people here are security people doing Cloud Foundry? Okay. Three, four. Okay. How many people are Cloud Foundry people doing security? The other way around. A few more. Um, what are the rest of you guys doing? <laughs> <laughs> Application developers worried about security. Okay. Good chat. Okay. I can add a lot. I have some, some opinion on on the strong authentication. So, as from service broker perspective, if we want to implement this, we need change broker API, and we need to hard like it, should, it has to be very very complicated to change to allow at least certification, for example, secure, to attach certificates, for example. We need that much stronger, and it's yeah, it's from 
in some of the top but I don't think we have lots of I, I mean in pure I think we have like lots of ideas how to implement different parts of security but it just different ways it's need someone from community to propose okay we need this certificates to add to service broker then we can work from it because service broker it, it hey, might be not deployment just CFR in some times and it's like we need to customize CFR to add this certificate and then talk from CFR or maybe I mean uh, what we have for what we have, for instance, is an application which is acting as a service broker, and we're not yet on Diego. That means anything we put on Cloud Foundry is more or less uh, public. Yeah? And that means currently, uh, without the strong authentication, anyone can just start guessing our passwords from the outside, get the users locked. Yeah? And this is one of the things we need to address. As I said, it's service broker API. It needs to go on a higher level. Like, it has to be great proposal because it's, it's one of the central point we need to change it. Yeah, I mean, if you would move to X59 client certificate, say, okay, the cloud controller has the capability of sending a client certificate as part of the TLS handshake, and it's the job of the service broker to do the authentication. It's not hard. As I said, it just sound bigger. Okay, so this sounds like a perfect topic to go and see Abby about because Abby's championing the Service Broker API and I think as we're focusing on that particular topic, yeah. I think that would be a great person to go and see. And if you need an introduction, yeah. I can point to okay. in your... I'd like to have that. Okay, perfect. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Cool, so thank you. Um, We've got about 10 minutes left, so we seem to be making good time. Uh, container security, this one. Who, who wrote that up? Yeah. yeah, my name is Robert Gertz. I also work for SAP. And the topic also has been pretty much handled with the um, first topic we had was the container to container communication so that was what's my intention when I wrote that down was more like container security is a container trusting other containers or not and how can it secures, secure calls or make sure that calls going into the container are those calls which are supposed to go in and not any calls which are not supposed to go in but I think that has been already pretty much handled. Okay, cool. Um, so one thing that I, I would add around this, uh, one of the key things that if you talk to the, the guys who raise their hand as security people doing Cloud Foundry, is compensating controls. So there may not be a perfect solution to that authentication guarantee that A goes or is connected into B, but there may be other things like logging, audit controls, those kind of things where you can detect when something out of normal is happening. Um, but interesting that connect container security is, is such a uh, hot topic here. Um, okay, moving on. Um, how do we get traditional security teams engaged with CF deployments? Who raised that? And I'm sure this is thought about across pretty much everyone in the in the room, so. Good topic. Hi, Stuart from Kingfisher, not the beer, sorry. Um, so we're new to Cloud Foundry, we're just deploying, playing around with it at the moment really. Um, we've stood up some environments and we asked security, our security team, who do a lot of things, to pen test it, because that, that was a good thing to do. And they went away and they said, yeah, we've got guys who can do that, no problem. And then they pen tested it and they came back about half an hour later and said, yeah, that's all good, we've done that. I was like, that was quick. What have, you, what have you actually done? We sat down with them, and what they'd done was they out of scope. Cloud Foundry, because they didn't know anything about it. So essentially, they pen tested and enabled the rest of the load balancer. Well done, boys. That was worth the money. So we then sat down with the security team and said, right, okay, you can't do that because this is going to be public facing. We need to do something useful with it, please. And they said, okay, it's great. 
here's an enormous spreadsheet of doom to fill in, answer all of these questions, and then we'll, we'll talk again. And they don't even know, what, <laughs> most of the questions on that spreadsheet are from the traditional enterprise IT security focus and aren't relevant to, well, IaaS, let alone PaaS. So it's really a case of what's everybody done about engaging with their existing security teams and how do you get them up to speed to even understand what's relevant, what's not relevant. That's it really, because our guys haven't got a clue and we don't really know what to do to, to get them to have a clue. So thoughts, feedback? Surely everyone here, or many people, have come up to this. I'm going to say I put my hand up because nobody else has. But, uh, Perfect uh, reason. I have some experience with this, and luckily our security team are a bit more like, focused on this is the thing we're going to do. Like, we need to figure out what it is. So it kind of started with um, me sort of drawing a diagram that showed them what Cloud Foundry was and explained to them what sort of things we were going to deploy onto it and kind of the risks I thought we were going to encounter along the way. And then there was like a few different conversations really about like what things they were most worried about and what things would take them a while to get their heads around. And um, as a result of that, we de-scoped some stuff from our project, like or pushed it, pushed it back a little bit because that was going to like take longer for them to get their like their their heads around. So we got to push out our platform. We changed our roadmap in a way that didn't really like didn't really significantly in, like hold up what we were trying to do. Um, and like basically just trying to trying to talk like explain what we're trying to do and what the next phase is. So it's like so did you basically get one of their team and stick them in your our family squad team, whatever it is, and go, right, you're with us, you're our security expert, help us for six months, go from there. Because that's what we're thinking about doing, just stealing one of them. Not directly, but actually we did have someone like that who came in from another organisation that was more security minded, who did three days a week for like two months, two or three months. And like, I think, I think that was really good reassurance that someone who they trusted had actually been in there and recognised that we were actually thinking about the right stuff and like have you know knocking ideas off with um, you know, talking about things and not just saying well security that's the thing we'll do later yeah, you can't do that <laughs> that's, that's not an option so we have a couple of minutes left so I, I'd, I'd just like to um, add into this conversation as well um, my background has been security architectures and doing these kind of things um, a couple of different things that you have to watch out for in Cloud Foundry. The first one is overzealous security people. When they suddenly start getting educated about what a Go router is versus um, con uh, Cloud Controller and all of those things, they start trying to apply policies within Cloud Foundry. So saying, oh, can I put a firewall rule here between this Diego brain and that? Is Hang on. Whoa back. So education is essential, but too much education can um, cause issues and you, you've got to pull back from it. In terms of the way that, or, or two things that I, I've heard from the foundation, heard from um, Pivotal themselves, um, the first one is when you think about Cloud Foundry, think of it as black box appliance and secure around it is the first start of it. Um, security accreditors and certifiers want to understand threats. What is it like, what is it, the, the problem that could cause issues within this? It's not just attacking for confidentiality, denial of service, all those kind of things. So what are they concerned about? The second part is then when you actually find a threat, how can you fix it? And one of the great things about Cloud Foundry and the, the huge value things is that um, you can patch at all the different levels and do the redeploys and all of that. So when you explain that to security, they suddenly start going, oh, okay, this is a, a good thing that we've never had before. And um, that can open a very fruitful line of conversation. Um, so I think this is a massive topic that um, we should all continue to discuss.
Um, we're coming up to about 20 past, so I don't want to keep you from your lunch. Um, how many people are on Slack or the Cloud Foundry Slack channels? Um, there's a very good security one in there. What I propose to do is take all of these, we didn't have nearly enough time to, to cover them, um, put them into, into that Slack channel for the, as the topics, and then we can actually start discussing them as a community, answering questions for each other. Uh, does that work for people? I've got GDS and SAP. Sort out. Good stuff, good stuff. Well, thank you for participating. Um, when I looked at the uh, schedule just before this session, and there were, I think, 10 people turned up and walked in here, I did think I was in the wrong room. So, um, very cool that so many people are interested, both from the application side, and the security side, and then also the platform deployment. Um, enjoy lunch, and thank you.